sisters and brothers in Christ here present, and all those who participate virtually through our sophisticated technology. As we gather this evening on a cold winter's night in expectation of a huge winter storm, we come and we listen to the Word. And the Word is always going to move into our hearts according to our own personal story. And the Word is going to move into our hearts depending upon what kind of week we have had. This morning I visited someone with the Eucharist and as the caregiver came to the door, on her sweatshirt, the words, love speaks louder. So I said, Antonia, what a beautiful greeting on your sweatshirt. Love speaks louder. In the core of this text, that is a thread. Now, what is the thread here? We have the order of the day. The order of the day in the culture of Jesus of Nazareth is Sabbath observance. The people of the time lived in the order of the Sabbath. There was a work week. It was a very burdensome work week. It was an agricultural work week. It was out on the farm work week. And so the people had to have, according to the law, this is Sabbath law, they had to have a time to set work aside. They had to suspend their labor. They had to fully recognize that God's presence superseded any other priority, that is called Sabbath. Rest in God's presence, be in community with others, and get restored back to life. If you were distracted by the anxieties of living, as Carol beautifully proclaimed to us for the Corinthians, if those anxieties were overwhelming during the week, the Sabbath was to say, Calm down. Repose yourself. Be at peace. And so in this context where the order of the tradition is broken by a convulsing spirit, now we get into the disorder that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in the order of the Sabbath experience comes this loudness this convulsing spirit disrupting everything, interrupting everything. Sounds familiar. COVID-19 interrupted everything, disrupted everything. Said everyone's personal traditions, family traditions, religious traditions, it derailed everything. Now Jesus is in the face of the disorder represented by the demon in the person. This is wonderful symbolic language and so applicable for our pandemic times. Now Jesus does what Jesus can do. He brings the reorder. He helps that community to come back to itself because he draws out the demon. And he says, quiet. He brings the calm. Sisters and brothers, in our Christ experience in the order, disorder, and reorder, we encounter our Christ. Christ is in the experience with us through these pandemic times. Our experience in community, whether it's in person or virtually, however we're experiencing the Christ, we are in Christ, and therefore can never be outside of the experience. But it's how we draw into this ever more deeply, love speaks louder. That's the Jesus authority. The Jesus authority in the text is he speaks the teachings of the Torah with an accent. And that accent 
is love. And his fame spreads, as Deacon Tom proclaimed, his fame spreads not necessarily only because of his teaching, but what he did with that teaching. He drove out demons. He healed the sick. The lame walked. The blind were able to see. The poor were given hope. That's the power of the authority of Jesus of Nazareth. Now that power of the first century comes down to us this day. The authority of, of being the Christian community is the power that love speaks louder. And therefore, no matter what the is going on in the society and in the shouting back and forth and the disagreeing and this side, that side. <laughs> it doesn't, Jesus doesn't get involved in any of that. Jesus is always trying to bring it back and restore to wholeness. So that person goes out from that synagogue free of their demons. That's what we believe. That's why we know there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's why we know the rainbow of the vaccine is going to hopefully encircle the world. Not only here, but it's going to, the vaccine is going to encircle the world with a new hope. Yes, that gospel gives light. It gives light. But now, ultimately, Jesus really never became famous. In his times. Never, never. If he was famous, as his claims, as Deacon Tom said, his fame spread everywhere throughout the whole. He was famous only partially. If he was really famous, he wouldn't have been on the cross. If he was really famous, his message of love would have changed more hearts in human history. Love speaks louder, but it's not always famous.